In this tutorial, we're going to take a project from the Edit Workspace and go to Create Disk. We're going to use our subtitles on a disk. First of all, let's check a few things. You see I've placed three chapters here and named them. We could easily set another one, just by moving the slider to the right-hand side, select in a position where you want the chapter to be, and click the plus symbol. You'll then see the chapter 4, and we double-click on that to rename it. It's a test position just for this tutorial. So I've renamed it. Now I want to change the, the image that appears with that particular chapter. Let's move it along and find a suitable image. And we can change it. Oh, it's not necessary. That ah, that'd probably be a better one. And we click on the set the current frame as the chapter thumbnail. Simple click there. And it changes. that this particular project is a quite a short one. It would normally only have one chapter marked and that's right at the beginning. Now let's go to have a check at something else. We've got subtitles in our project here and we want to make certain those subtitles are available on disk. To do that after placing them we do a check. Click on the subtitle type and as you see here the subtitles are super suitable for a video file, but we would like them for the disk. So we click that uh, or, and make, check it, and we make certain that the create subtitles for a disk is now initiated, and we click OK. We're now ready to move to the create disk mode. So we click on the button and we move to create disk. From the Edit Workspace, we come into the Content tab, which displays uh, the video files that we're going to use in our project. We brought additional videos in by selecting and importing additional videos, or we can import additional PowerDirector projects. We're in Menu Preferences, and we have a large number of templates here, sourced from PowerProducer 5 and from the Director Zone where you can download additional templates. Let's now select a template that we can use. Double click on the template, have a look at it. I'm going to apply it to all pages. And there's our template. Let's now navigate to the scenes, highlight that scenes button there and click enter. We have three buttons in this template by default not enough for what we need in the project that's being created. Right then, move back to template 22 and double click on it and select modify. Menu designer displays. Now I'm quite happy with the uh, root menu. We're in the root menu there. So let's drop down and have a look at the title chapters menu. Now remember we're making or designing a template and that we've only got one item showing. So in the modifying template, we've only at the moment got one. Let's, end, let's add another one. That was easy, wasn't it? Do you see what I did? Just clicked on a button up there, which said add a button. To help us position the buttons, select grid lines. I go for 10 times 10 because it just helps you resize another button that was originally there bring it down to the roughly the same size of what the other one is. So you start off with buttons all together the same size. The aim here is to put six buttons, which is the maximum, onto one page and reposition them. Do I want the first one over there or do I want the first one over this side? Ooh, all these tricky decisions. We're now at the stage of adding the very last sixth button to our project. All very easy, very straightforward. Align them and position it. We have a just come out and go back in again to align the name, title of the video. 
The name of each title can be repositioned. Watch out for the navigation buttons that are underneath. My videos is where the title of the disc will come up here. Item 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 are the titles of the videos that you've included into the project. All very straightforward. Finally, we come to saving our edited uh, menu. The slider controls the image that will appear and we put a name here and we click OK. And here's the one we've just saved. Let's click on that one. And remember, we've got to apply it to all pages. And then let's go and examine what we've saved. Click on Scenes, click Enter. And there we have six buttons on the page. Let's go to Menu Structure now. We've edited the menu template to display six buttons per page. We now have to rename a section, so double click on that and bring this up here. One click between the two. Let's call it Tutorials Page 2. Move the video bit. Simple use of your keyboard. And that's complete. So now we know how to edit and change the titles in here. Work our way through, change these titles if necessary. Call that chapter Audio Wave Editor. And it has four buttons underneath. This one has four buttons as well. So adding the extra buttons to the template has helped us a lot. Again, we've got a little mistake here. Let's make the correction. All very straightforward. I don't know if you spotted earlier on, there are some errors in the, in the title names. Let's have a quick look on this. Bring up the tutorial page two again. Ooh, look at that. See, it overlaps. Doesn't look very good. What we can do there is quite, uh, quite clever. We can shrink that down using keyboard and then we can also change it to uh, come into the center see and it moves to the center here's the root menu let's go, go and have a look at one of the scenes pages double click brings it up there's one of the scenes with all the um, links to the buttons to the videos We can have a background music. We can change it if we want to. Or we can take it away. We can add a smart sound. We can have a first play video. At the moment I'm sticking with all the defaults which we've had. Playback mode. Start from the menu page and play all titles sequentially. You can set the disc's playback mode. Click the button and brings up the choices. Read through the choices and decide which you want. For this tutorial, we're leaving it as it is and clicking OK. It's about time now we checked out Preview. Click on the Preview button. Preview is of a low resolution. Select Subtitles to test the configuration. Everything works correctly. Thank you for watching the PowerDirector 9 tutorial. The very final thing you have to do is click the burn button. Make your choices, burn to disk, and start burning.